recently you were on Alex O'Connor's YouTube channel yeah. and this idea of idols mm -hmm. came up. And by the way, beautiful that he had you on. He's had a lot of really interesting people on. He's had on uh, William Lane Craig and he had you on. And so like, I, I appreciate him willing to platform people mm. he may disagree with on God, but mm. still being able to glean from him. I get the sense that he's there's a shift happening uh, did you just get any of that because he's been a pretty staunch atheist but then it seems like he keeps platforming christians for some reason well i think he also i think that he is what i see from him is that he wants to be honest like he's mm -hmm. trying to to keep the conversation open mm -hmm. and and he's also i mean he's also he's a smart guy he mm -hmm. realizes that if he only has atheists watching his channel mm -hmm. then what who is he talking to mm -hmm. you know he's just preaching to the crowd mm -hmm. so i think he wants to keep the conversation open because he wanted to he wanted me on his show and I refused at first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not interested in this. These these like kind of debate spaces sure, where sure, you're sure. like debating the Trinity or all yeah, this yeah. stuff. Um, and uh, and I said no. And then finally I met him in London because he was at ARC, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw him. There. I did not see yeah, him. Yeah, he was there. there. Yeah, he was there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like a like a like a loser. I should, so oh, I met nice him there and then he said, Look, he said, I don't think you know, he said it doesn't have to be a debate. Like we could even talk about something else if you yeah. want. We could talk about other things. Yeah. And so I was really, I thought it was great. I thought the I conversation thought was, was quite, was quite good. So the, the the topic of idolatry, idolatry, he brought it up. Yeah, and you gave, in my opinion, one of the most refreshing perspectives on the difference between idols and icons. Yeah, right. And I covered it in a video where uh, the, a, a predominant, massive uh, Protestant pastor who was very influential, kind of. I don't say came after the chosen, but basically mm. said the chosen, who, which which I'm a fan of, uh, and my friends, you know, create on that show. It basically said it's breaking the second commandment, right? Because there's an image of Jesus. Did and, he say that on a? Did he say that on a podcast on yeah, a YouTube yeah, video yeah, yeah, with yeah. his image? Uh, they were talking about the chosen. I mean, you're watching his image tell you that. Yeah, he said. He said. He said. <laughs> Do you see the performative contradiction? Here? Right. right. <laughs> like you're literally watching an image, a moving image of him. Yeah. Telling you. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. to make images. Yeah. 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 That that's that's funny. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's a crazy. I mean, yeah. it's like it's like think your things through, people. Yeah, like yeah. before you just go, th at least understand the world you live in and yeah. the things you participate in before you go full yeah. on after yeah, yeah. something. My yeah. goodness. So so he makes this point and he says, I, the chosen, the line for me is the second commandment that chosen. And I guess that this is a, a very Baptist type of view about <laughs> all depictions, all icons, all images, all paintings of Jesus in any way, shape or form or idols. Right. And so I juxtapose your explanation, the difference between an idol and an icon. Yeah. Right. And can, can you unpack that? Because that was brilliant. Okay. So we, I think if you want to do that, we, we should do it in two steps. Okay. Right. One is, the problem of representation, first of all, like mm -hmm. we need to, that's important to talk about that, okay. right? And then we can talk about the problem of the idol afterwards, let's say. Sure. So, you know, there is a second commandment, uh -huh. right? It's right there. God says, do not make images. Uh -huh. uh, and so do not make images of anything in heaven and on earth. Do not bow down to them. Do yep. not worship them. Yep. And so then right after that, mm -hmm. God tells Moses to make images, mm -hmm. right? He says, Make cherubs, make mm. put them on the veils of the temple, mm. you know. And then, then he says, make a serpent, you know, mm -hmm. lift it up in the desert. Mm -hmm. Everybody looking at this serpent, mm -hmm. and then they'll be healed of their of their disease. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the, mm -hmm. what is going on? Mm -hmm. Especially on Sinai itself, which mm -hmm. is like God just tells them, don't make images, mm -hmm. and and don't make images, especially not holy images. Mm -hmm. And then he says, put two cherubs on the ark of the covenant. Mm -hmm. They will be the seat of God, the very seat of God, mm -hmm. on which I will descend and manifest myself between these two images. Mm -hmm. It's like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. That is the mm -hmm. weirdest thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. But so already in Scripture, in the very revelation... There's some tension there. there is a, it's not a tension. It is moving towards helping you understand the difference between the idol oh, and the icon. Already good. it's right there in Scripture. That's good. And, and the, also the other problem that you have is, it's very weird if you think about, it's like, why is the second commandment there? Mm -hmm. the set, you know, what's the reason for the second commandment? Because mm -hmm. we can say like, oh, it's there. God said that. It's like... So God gives us his name, right? Mm -hmm. And then God got people, people uh, lift up his name. Mm -hmm. People worship his name. Mm -hmm. You find text in, in scripture, in the, in the Psalms, in, in the, the prophetic text where it says, I worship your holy name. Mm -hmm. mm. What, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are we bowing down before the name of God? Mm -hmm. Was the name of God, God himself? Mm -hmm. That's a weird thing, isn't right. it? Right, 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 right. right. So what is going on there? So yeah. if God... If God gives us his name uh -huh. and then we 
we, we celebrate his name. We lift it up because we're so grateful that God has given us his name. Mm -hmm. He's revealed himself to us in his name. Mm -hmm. And so we're willing to like lift that up and, and raise it up because sure. we know it's by that means that he's showing himself yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. And the answer is, well, why can't we have an image of God? Yeah. That's a question. Yeah. And, and, and the answer is, well, there is no image of God. Mm -hmm. But is that true? Mm. That there's no image of God? Mm -hmm. There is an image of God. What's the image of God? Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And already that's hinted at already in scripture in Genesis, yeah. which is that God makes man in the image, mm. in his image. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, and then something weird happens at the fall. Things get twisted. Mm -hmm. Things get turned around. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everything gets weird. Mm -hmm. But then Christ restores that. Mm -hmm. And I think that not only is making images possible because of the second commandment, mm -hmm. image revealed in Christ, the fact that Christ restores the image mm -hmm. so that the visual aspect of this figure of Jesus Christ in the first century uh, is now part of the revelation of God. Mm -hmm. I think it's the reason for the second commandment, mm. that it's, it's literally showing to us, revealing to us what the reason for that commandment was, because it was leading to Christ. Mm. It was saying, don't make images because I will give you an image. Mm -hmm. I will give you an image in my incarnation. Mm -hmm. But that is what it was leading to. Mm -hmm. so if we don't understand the commandments mm -hmm. and how they relate to the incarnation, mm -hmm. then we're missing the commandments. Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we doing? Like, what's the point mm -hmm. of the commandments? Because mm -hmm. Jesus plays with the commandments, mm -hmm. right? He, 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 he takes the commandments and he says crazy things about them mm -hmm. to help you understand that he is the reason for the commandments. Mm -hmm. And he says things that seem to flip the commandments upside down. Yeah. If you do not hate your father, if you do not mm -hmm. hate your mother, mm -hmm. it's like, well, doesn't the 10th commandment say you should honor your sure, father and your mother? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's, remi he's reminding us, yes, that commandment, but through me, mm -hmm. yes, that commandment, but the incarnation is the reason for that commandment, mm. right? And that's the reason why, for example, we don't sell, most of us, most Christians don't celebrate the Sabbath anymore. Mm -hmm. Even though it's right there in the 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. It's because the reason for the Sabbath mm -hmm. is Christ. That's right. Christ reveals the meaning of the Sabbath in his in his death, yeah. right? That is the greatest Sabbath. That yep. is the Sabbath of all Sabbaths, yep. right? Yep. And then we celebrate the, the fruit of that, which is the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So for the same reason, that is why Christians ultimately realize that the image has become part. God has filled the image with his revelation, mm -hmm. right? And that image is the icon of Christ. Mm. That, is, that is the first part, which is the image part. Yeah. But then the, the, just the basic idol and 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 uh, icon part mm -hmm. it's like i said it's the same thing that happens in the in the old testament which is that god tells moses make a serpent mm -hmm. right lift it up everybody looks to it mm -hmm. if they and if they believe they'll be saved mm -hmm. so he does that they do that they believe it but they know that it's god that is mm -hmm. saving them right, right right but later in scripture that same image that god told moses to put up mm -hmm. becomes an idol mm -hmm. why because people see it as the top, mm. see it as something that is God in itself, mm -hmm. right? That it doesn't, isn't pointing higher mm -hmm. towards a higher participation. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, everything can be an idol. Mm -hmm. Everything in the world can be an idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible can be an idol. Uh -huh. If you take the Bible to be the summation of what God is, yeah. if you think that God is completely contained in Scripture, yep. and that God is not greater and not higher and more lofty than Scripture, yeah. then you can make the Bible into an idol. Yeah. And that is true of every means that God gives us. So what's the answer? Are we going to rid ourselves of all the means of revelation that God offers? Yeah, yeah. Of all the people that come up to us and present the grace of God to us, that pray for us? We could say, well, that could be an idol, because I could think it's the pastor praying for me mm -hmm. that is the top of the, the thing. Like, mm -hmm. I could latch on to my pastor and think that he basically is God because mm -hmm. I see that his prayers help me. Mm -hmm. and it's like, no, the process of being a Christian is seeing how God fills these things with mm -hmm. his glory mm -hmm. and that ultimately they all participate in his revelation, mm -hmm. but that you always have to be careful not to take those revelations as things that hold in themselves. Mm -hmm. They always have to be transparent towards more. Yeah. And that's the difference between an icon and the idol. Yeah. And the weird thing about it is that it's the same thing. Yeah. The same it's, the, it's the same physical thing yeah. with two totally different purposes exactly. and two totally different conclusions. Yeah, that's right. That's interesting. So you 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 said it, uh, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said it, uh, an icon points you to something more transcendent and to the, to the ultimate source, whereas an idol is the source and, 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 and is the source of worship. And tries, to, yeah, and tries to take that worship for itself, you yeah. could say, or contain it in itself. Yeah. And you could say that it really is it's really is the sin that's all our sins. Like, sure. it's just pride. It's sure. like, it's a form of pride that is now out into the world, yeah, which yeah. is that instead of thinking that, well, all that is good of me I receive from God, mm -hmm. I think it's mine. I think I've got it. I mm -hmm. think I own it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the idol. It's like, it comes from this, mm -hmm. right? It's like, my joy comes from my money. Mm -hmm. Well, no, 
Your joy doesn't come from your That's money. Right. That's God right. will provide money to yep. help you in your life. Yep. Yep. But if you think your joy comes from your money, then you will suffer. Mm. If you think that your life, that that your meaning comes from, you know, your your pleasures, you know, your eating or, or sex or whatever, mm -hmm. then you're going to lose that pleasure. You're going to lose that. It's going to become nothing mm. because all of that is good, good things that are given from yeah. God. And yeah. they have to be seen in that transparent relationship. Yeah. Good things can be perverted and become God things. That's right. Right? That's right. And so we can receive certain things, but the moment they become the idol, the moment they become the the conclusion instead of the the thing that gets us to the conclusion, right? And then I think for me, what, it, what that does is that allows a different degree of freedom, right? And so it's like, am I buying a nice pair of shoes? You made the comments earlier, like, <laughs> you like shoes. I got some Jordan 11s on right now, right? Am I buying a nice pair of shoes because I'm I'm buying a nice pair of shoes to fill the void and the emptiness, and that's an act of worship? Or am I buying a nice pair of shoes because I appreciate the craftsmanship, I appreciate the design, I appreciate the the, the theme behind it, mm. and 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 it serves a, a, a functional utility? Is that, a, is that a reasonable way of looking at it? No, I think that that's exactly right, and that's true at every level of anything that you do, you right? Do. It's like... Food, yeah. sex, music, art, everything. But even like like structurally, like when I talked about how these patterns, you know, the pattern of art, it's yeah. supposed to pattern reality. Uh -huh. It's a good way to understand it, uh -huh. which is that if you are doing anything, like let's say you're, I don't know, you're you're building a uh, like a birdhouse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you you have a hammer and nails and you have wood, mm -hmm. and then you're basically all the actions you're doing have to serve the purpose mm -hmm. of making the birdhouse. Mm -hmm. But if one of those actions like captures you mm -hmm. and you become like obsessed with like nailing, putting in nails, yeah, yeah, yeah. then at some point you're not building a birdhouse anymore, birdhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you've been completely run off the yes. course of what you're doing. Yes. So in everything we do, it's always the case where yeah. you always have to be careful not to let the task you're doing yeah. become an idol yeah. and lose sight of the goal. That's like whether you're making robots or making food. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think a lot of artists will hit analysis of paralysis. Mm. Uh, in, in my world, this is like tinkering and tweaking mixes. Yeah, that's a good example. Where you, <laughs> you could, just get stuck and it never yeah, comes out. That's right. It's like it's never perfect enough. And, you, that, and that 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 song then becomes the idol. That's right. Right. That's Instead exactly of right. releasing it in, and sharing it with the world. Yeah, and understanding that it's like there is no perfection in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like when perfection, you know, it's like it's weird. It's like when perfection and it manifested itself in the world, yeah. you know, we crucified it, yep. we, we killed it. Like yep. that's what perfection, that's what perfection looks like yeah. in the world yeah. is Jesus on the cross. Yeah. It's, there is no like perfect thing, uh, yeah. you know, in the world. The world crucified perfection when it was manifested. So we should crucify our desire for perfection in the sense of art. There you go. That's, that's a good. good way to see that's it. good. That could preach. Um, that could preach. <laughs> we see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. For the Christians watching this channel, I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day to day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf and two it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that i was praying for and see the hand of god tangibly in my life when he answers them so i would urge you consider writing down your prayers it could be in a blank notebook it could even be on your phone or you could check out the one i personally designed and used from my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that i think will be a huge blessing it's the exact structure and system that i've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. You can pick yours up today by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.